hi there, Fatima. Nice job with these new essays. Let's get straight into your corrections so that we can see what you wrote. These days, more and more people are traveling domestically or internationally. There are clearly many benefits to it, but there are some who argue that it also has some drawbacks. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of traveling. Okay. Nowadays, traveling is one of the most popular hobbies around the world, since some people declare it as a mesmerizing and compelling experience. However, it should not be forgotten that opposite to the bright side, traveling can also have disadvantages. This essay will discuss both points of view and suggest the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Examples from the American Institute of Happiness and the Spanish survey will be used to demonstrate points and support arguments. Okay, on the whole, this is a very nice introduction, but there are some places that we need to make some corrections, okay? So let's take a look at it again. Nowadays, traveling is one of the most popular hobbies around the world, uh, since some people declare it as a compelling experience. And mesmerizing isn't really necessarily a um, an appropriate way to describe travel. Um, compelling, sure. Mesmerizing is a little, maybe not entirely fitting. However, it should not be forgotten that um, uh, in, in contrast to its bright side, this sounds a little more natural, or maybe that in contrast to its benefits, that would be even better. This, however, doesn't really sound very natural either. Traveling can also have disadvantages. Traveling can have, okay? This essay will discuss both points of view and suggest that you really did want a that here. The advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Um, examples from the American Institute of Happiness. Happiness should be capitalized. Um, and the rest of it is perfect. Okay, so some really nice elements to this introduction, but there are some places that you needed to just make some minor corrections. Okay. <clears throat> to start, traveling could be said to be an enriching experience. This is largely because it takes people out of out from their comfort zone. Usually we say out of their comfort zone, providing them with a wide range of advantages from learning about other cultures, trying new things, and knowing how to adapt without the ing here please to basic comfort such as having a rest from work and just connecting to the routine. Now check it out, Fatima. This is not a complete sentence. Okay? So, um, it's basically a fragment. So you needed to add something here. Um, you could have either added this to the previous sentence, or since it's really long, you can make it its own sentence. So you could keep all of this from learning about other countries, trying new things, and knowing how to adapt to new situations, etc., 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 and then comma, uh, traveling has uh, too many benefits to be ignored, or traveling has um, a wide, um, a wide-reaching scope and um, wide range of benefits. So something like that. But you absolutely needed to have another clause here because on its own, this is just a fragment. Okay. For instance, a recent recent no. For instance, recent research by the American Institute of Happiness claimed that people who travel at least twice a year are happier than those who do not. Okay, perfect. Um, therefore, traveling is an eye-opener experience with clear benefits. This is called an eye-opening experience. Okay, you could either say that it is an eye-opener and then without experience, or it's an eye-opening experience. Having said that, traveling also has downsides. Money along with time are the ones most more argued by society. Okay. Uh, people often complain about the arduous journeys and the high costs associated. I would have added with travel here, okay? Associated with travel. The question is, if people had enough time and money to travel, would they travel more? Um, okay. Furthermore, there are some people with no sense of adventure, and for them, the advantages turn into drawbacks. For example, a survey carried out in Spain showed that older generations state traveling abroad is a stressing and annoying experience. As a consequence, the drawbacks might be perceived um, depending on each one's personality. Okay, the paragraph is great. Um, it's interesting, and I like that you kind of changed things up a little bit with a question. However, this feels a little unnatural again. So, as a consequence, the draw the drawbacks may be. Um, 
okay, the drawbacks might be perceived depending on each person's personality. Um, I know what you're trying to say here. I can't really think off the top of my head of a better expression for this, but this particular sentence just doesn't really sound completely natural. So I'd like you to replace it with something um, maybe a little clearer. So to conclude from the arguments given, I believe traveling advantages compensate the disadvantages, mainly because the latter varies from person to person. If everyone had a positive will towards adventure, they would enjoy maybe it more? It, like traveling. Traveling is said to be the only thing that you pay for, you pay for, and makes you richer because of the indelible impression it leaves. That's beautiful. I love this. That's really, really nice. Now, check this out, though. You're basically telling me here that um, you think that traveling has more advantages than disadvantages, but you put the disadvantages towards the bottom. And this is not the correct order. We always put the side that we agree with towards the end of the essay and the side that we disagree with at the top, at the first body, in the first body paragraph. Okay, so you just need to change the order of your paragraphs a little bit. And um, uh, if we need to, I'll go into a little bit more detail another time about why. But that's the correct order. First, the side that you agree with less, and at the bottom, we put the side we agree with more. Very nice. Um, just some little er errors, but on the whole, good. So let me take a look at your other essay. Okay, and here we have your floor plan. So let's take a look. The picture above displays the plan 4004-3C of a two-level house with a main floor area of 1789 square feet and a lower level area of 798 square feet. The width of the whole property is 69 inches and the depth 36. 69 inches or maybe 69 feet? I think it should be feet here, not inches. 69 inches is super tiny. In regards to the lower level, now this should be uh, with regard to, I think is the best expression here. There are three main rooms. The activity room is the biggest one with 22.7 and 15.3 inches. All right, you're clearly um, confusing your inches with your feet here. So we think about a room. I mean, just like logically think about it. A room that's 22 inches or 15 inches is like a dollhouse size room. Okay, so just be careful with that kind of thing. From its door, the laundry in the bedroom number four are accessible. Bedroom four counts with a closet on the left down corner all right this this is i feel like this is um a translation from maybe your native language or another language you know but um you want to say here bedroom four consists of a closet or bedroom four includes a closet on the left on the lower left corner not the left down corner on the lower left corner and the laundry has access to a bath on the right and stairs at the northern end of the room. Lovely. Moreover, on the right side of the lower level plan, between the activity room and the laundry, there are allocated the main stairs that go to the main floor. Um, you don't want to say allocated. You want to say, um, <coughs> excuse me, the best way to say this would be um, the main stairs that go to the main floor are located, not allocated. Okay. Turning to the main floor plan, the plane is divided. Uh, at the left of the entry, the stairs give way to three bedrooms and a bathroom. Beautiful. All of the three bedrooms have a closet, except for bedroom one, which is the biggest, uh, that has two closets and a bath, too. Lovely. Other stairs are located, or also located next to the bedroom number one bath. The right side of the entry has access to the kitchen and the living room. The house also has a dining room in the right upper corner of the plane, and facing it, there is a garage. Overall, the main floor is here, almost double the size of the lower floor. The garage is the biggest chamber of them all. In the house, there are small cubicles, too, designated mainly for storage. Okay, so um, this was all really, really good, and I was pretty happy with it until I came to this, to your overview, or some people like to call it the conclusion. But what you've done here is you've mentioned new information. So this is the first time you mentioned the garage and you mentioned the storage cubicles, and that's not really appropriate. Basically, what your overview needs to do <coughs> is it needs to pretty much um, 
cover the main, most obvious things. And your first sentence did that, where you said that the main floor was twice the size of the lower level. Um, so you probably could have just left it there. The information that you put in the second sentence really belonged elsewhere in the description. Okay, um, so all that stuff about the garage <coughs> and the storage um, areas. Now, um, you went into a lot of detail about the entranceways and the, and the bath and everything, but there was really very little regarding the kitchen or this little nook. Okay, you went into a lot of details about doors and bathrooms and things like that, but you didn't mention the nook, at, <coughs> excuse me, at all. So I don't know how that would, um, how big of a detail an examiner would consider this. I mean, you've got one, two, three, four, five, I don't know what this says, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Well, you've got about, yeah, I guess it could be considered a detail because you've got about 15, 16 different areas to um, mention here. Um, okay, so just make sure that you mention all the major things and some of those minor things like doorways and um, such and stairway or stairwells and so forth maybe could be analyzed a little less but on the whole it was really good just remember what I said about the overview the overview should be like the most obvious thing that you look at when you look at this map or diagram or whatever so you shouldn't mention new information which is what you did with that second sentence okay but on the whole it was quite nice so good job with this um, don't forget to correct these essays and return them with your new ones, add your errors to your error correction list. And so um, I will be looking forward in the next 24 hours or so for your new essays, Fatima. Okay, so um, good luck writing.